I will, um, I'll read something uh, that um, I wrote in a little different vein and then I, I'll tell uh, one or two anecdotes. Thank you. So this is what I wrote. Tamal Krishna Goswami has done so much service for Srila Prabhupada. I could speak for hours about it. And I know that Prabhupada is pleased and proud of him. Tamal Krishna Goswami has helped me personally in so many ways as well. I could speak for hours about that too. But today I wish to discuss his amazing, powerful effect on a devotee who never met him, Madan Mohan Mohini Dasi. He managed it. He manifested himself to her in such a potent and personal way that she has become mad after him. And he has empowered her to serve him in manifold ways. She has done much to preserve his legacy and expand his glories. But one of the things that has impressed me most is how she acted, especially while she was in Dallas, to reach out to Gurudev's disciples and encourage them in their relationships with him and with each other. She seemed inspired and empowered by Gurudev to speak to each one in just the right way and to encourage and engage them in the most appropriate way in Gurudev's service in Krishna consciousness. From her example, we can learn many significant lessons in relation to Srila Gurudev. He is always present. He can manifest himself powerfully and personally to anyone even someone who never met him. He can show his kindness, compassion, and care to anyone at any time. And he can empower anyone in his service in wonderful ways. So we should have full faith in him, in his presence, in his potency, and in his personal care. I feel separation from Srila Gurudev. I miss him dearly. But I take solace and find shelter in the association of those who love and serve him, like all of you, and including those who, in this life, never met him. Srila Guru Dev Ki Jai. Um, so now for the anecdotes, um, there were two from Srila Prabhupada's time. Uh, the first uh, took place in Vrindavan when uh, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada formed the Bhaktivedanta Swami Charity Trust and uh, he sent me to um, uh, Mathura to get it registered which was a quite a uh, ar arduous difficult uh, un uncongenial job. Um, and so, you know, I was there until late, then I came back, uh, went to Srila Prabhupada's house in Vrindavan, left the document, 
and uh, went up to my room, small room in the Krishna Balaram guest house uh, to retire for the evening. After a few minutes, I heard very hard pounding on the door. And I thought this could be only one person. So I opened the door and there was Tamal Krishna Goswami. And his first words, I'll never forget, his first words were, boy, did you blow it. <laughs> And then he went on to say that I had, I had registered the name wrong. Mm. I, had, I had made it Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust. And Srila Prabhupada said, there can be so many Bhaktivedantas, but I'm Bhaktivedanta Swami, so it has to be Bhaktivedanta Swami Charity Trust. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you have to go tomorrow and redo it properly. Now, the reason this incident stands out in my memory is because Tamal Krishna Goswami and I were good friends. And sometimes when we're uh, close with someone, we, we don't want to uh, speak strongly to them because we don't want to, you know, damage the relationship. Uh, so what made me so happy about the way Tamal Krishna Goswami chided me is it, it proved that, of course, I knew it, but still it, it, it reconfirmed that Srila Prabhupada was the center of, of our relationship. And then when, when it came to Srila Prabhupada's service, he wouldn't compromise uh, or, you know, speak pleasantly for the sake of our, the, the smooth social interactions in our relationship. So I found that very, uh, very encouraging, very encouraging. The other incident took place uh, late during Srila Prabhupada's presence with us in 1977. He was staying upstairs in his uh, quarters in Juhu. And the whole idea was that no one should disturb Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada was in, in his quarters. Uh, I mean, not just his quarters, but he was in his room. And then outside his room, there was a, 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 a pair of doors and in, that led to like a library. And then the library had another set of doors. And then beyond that was the desk where the secretary, who was Tamal Krishna Goswami, would sit. Um, so there were yet yeah, two, two pairs of doors. But just to be special, um, take special care not to disturb, disturb Srila Prabhupada, Tamal Krishna Goswami and I went almost into the hallway. I mean, he didn't want to leave his service. He didn't want to leave his post unattended. So we are almost outside the quarters. And um, yeah, he embraced me affectionately. And then uh, he asked me to go to the bank to make a deposit. And I thought, you know, I'm the temple president. I can do so many things that others cannot do. I mean, so many people can make a deposit. So I, I said that to Tamal Krishna Goswami. And just then, Srila Prabhupada's buzzer rang. Uh, you might have heard 
Srila Prabhupada's, I mean, you might have heard Srila Guru Dave's buzzer upstairs <laughs> in Dallas. Well, Srila Prabhupada was the first, he had his buzzer. <laughs> and so, and when he rang the buzzer, we were so happy because it was, it was very hard to get to see Srila Prabhupada because he was not well at all. And uh, the whole idea was not to disturb him. So we both ran around uh, uh, with great eagerness and, and happiness. And Srila Prabhupada began speaking. And then at a certain point he said, if the spiritual master tells you to go to the bank and you refuse, where is the surrender? Mm -hmm. So I thought, Prabhupada could not possibly have heard our discussion. I thought it must have been, you know, the Paramatma. Uh, the spiritual master is the external manifestation of the super soul, impelling him to say that. Although our god brother um, Tejas Das uh, did comment that Srila Prabhupada had extraordinarily, ex extraordinarily acute senses. So he thought it might have been possible that he actually heard it. But I didn't think so at the time, for sure. Um, and, you know, there's more to the discussion, but what really st st stayed with me was, you know, if the spiritual master tells you to go to the bank and you refuse, where is the surrender? And I took that um, to mean that I shouldn't have taken it that Tamal Krishna Goswami was asking me to go to the bank, but actually my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, was asking me to go to the bank through him. And I shouldn't see him um, independent of Srila Prabhupada because he was so um, intimately connected with and um, tuned in to Srila Prabhupada. So, um, yeah, I've always had that sort of dual relationship with Tamal Krishna Goswami uh, uh, as a god brother, you know, as a friend, but also as like, like a disciple because of his, um, you know, closeness to Srila Prabhupada and uh, Srila Prabhupada's disciple. And I was also glad that after Srila Prabhupada left, the, the, uh, that Gaur Purnima <clears throat> in 1978, um, Jaya Swami and I uh, took sannyas. And um, Jaya Dwaita Swami took from Satsrupa Das Goswami and I took from Tamal Krishna Goswami. And Tamal Krishna Goswami commented at the ceremony that, that it was the end of an era because uh, Jaya Dvaita Prabhu and I were like <clears throat> senior brahmacharis. But why I'm mentioning it is that being his sannyas disciple um, reinforced that, uh, you know, Muda being a disciple, uh, being in the position of a disciple. Um, and one, one more little thing, if we have three minutes. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> this goes <clears throat> to after Srila Prabhupada left. And, um, th you know, there was, uh, you know, things seemed okay for a while with what came to be known as the zonal acharyas. 
And then, um, you know, some of them started to fall down and there was a lot of um, uh, chaos in the movement. And, uh, and I was in that situation in um, South Africa and, and Mauritius where um, the Zona Lachari had been Bhagavan Prabhu. And then when he fell down, I had to like deal with so many things. And it was going on in many other places. So I felt very isolated. And um, anyway, somehow or other, I was able to get free and I came to Dallas. And uh, I had a memorable um, talk with him in his bedroom. We were, we were sitting on the floor together. And he said that uh, with all my association with Srila Prabhupada and with my three initiations from Srila Prabhupada, first, second, and sannyas, I still feel um, the need for shiksha gurus in my life. And uh, then he listed some people who, whom he considered to be his shiksha gurus. Um, I don't remember all the names he mentioned, but he mentioned Shivaram Swami. He mentioned Burijan Prabhu, even mentioned me. <laughs> and uh, that really got me thinking because after all these senior devotees left, you know, fell down, senior devotees in whom I'd had so much faith. I sort of made an internal resolution. I'm not going to put my faith in anyone except Srila Prabhupada now. But when he spoke like that, I started thinking, hmm, because accepting someone as a Shiksha Guru obviously means you have to have faith in that person. So that got me thinking. Then the next morning, uh, after Mangalarti during the Japa period, and the, the, the mood in the temple room was very intense then. I mean, there were so many people there chanting Japa really uh, intently. And Srila Guru Dave himself was chanting Japa and devotees were sort of like walking around in a s circle. And... Um, and suddenly I got this, uh, to say, inspiration in my heart or intuition in my heart that I, that I should accept Srila Gurudev as my Shiksha Guru. And, um, you know, I wanted to tell him, but I didn't want to interrupt his japa. But finally it became too much. And I, and I approached him and I said, I don't want to interrupt your Jabba, but I was thinking about what you said last night. And I want to accept you as my Shiksha Guru. And he looked at me with his sort of knowing glance and a, a, a mild smile on his face like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i i thank him um for you know inspiring me with that realization and 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 for guiding me all along and uh continuing to guide me and also for uh yeah so so many arrangements um and gifts, like uh, Buri John Prabhu said that he gave um, Ritadvadra Swami and me Texas. He gave Giri Hari Swami the Orient. And he gave Keshava Bharati Dasko Swami Govardhan. Nice. The Ashram of Govardhan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, his gifts, Kalachanji Prabhu, my editor, more than editor, but <laughs> major gift 
from Srila Gurudev. So, yeah, I'm grateful to him and to all of you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And thank you.